the Northern Alliance were not very popular. I mean, the Northern Alliance were the Mujahideen who'd gone into Kabul, raped and killed women, children. Uh, there was factional fighting all over the city. They were not the great liberators, you know. Um, so people, the Afghans, a lot of the Afghans wanted foreigners in there. There are some special forces that did a great job. There are others, you know, just to give you an example, um, they relied very heavily on a guy named Amir Dado in Helmand. I have a letter from that the special forces wrote begging the government to keep him in his position. He was probably great friends and wonderful with the special forces. And I'm sure he hosted them to wonderful dinners. He gave them everything they need. And he said, this guy's al-Qaeda, this guy's al-Qaeda, this guy's al-Qaeda. And they were all his tribal enemies. So that's the kind of thing the special force, and they have admitted this. They get in the midst of tribal wars all the time because that's how they live. They take one side, become buddies with them, and they rely on them for protection. The other problem with the special forces, they go out in small teams. When they get in trouble, they have to call in air power. When they call an air power, there's airstrikes, and the airstrikes usually fall on the wrong people because they're going to fall on some Taliban and a lot of civilians. And then you have six villages that were kind of neutral that are going to go onto the side of the Taliban. So I don't know that the special forces in alone were the answer. Um, they did a great job getting in there and overthrowing the Taliban. But you have a whole nother, they were the insurgents, you know, and now they became the, the sort of, the Taliban became the insurgents. They switched places. It's much easier to be an insurgent and overthrow a government.